India achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. On the evening of the 23rd of August 2023, India made history as the lander and rover landed at the lunar South Pole region, making it the first country to successfully land a spacecraft near the lunar South Pole. Well, this mission wasn't a cakewalk, it was a recovery from a failure, an achievement that shines with pride, and a milestone in space science. In this video, we'll get to know Chandrayaan-3, the hardships it faced, and its future endeavors. This is a video you don't want to miss. When the world witnessed the progress of Chandrayaan-2, India's second lunar mission, no one expected its lander to deviate from its intended trajectory and crash, shattering the aspirations of all Indians. All is well. All is well. कई रातों से आप सोए नहीं हैं। मन में स्वाभाविक प्रश्न था क्यों हुआ कैसे हुआ और वैज्ञानिक का मन ही तो वही होता है वो हर बात को क्यों और क्यों से शुरू करता है साथियों आज भले ही कुछ रुकावटें आई हो रुकावटें हाथ लगी हो लेकिन इससे हमारा हौसला कमजोर नहीं पड़ा है बल्कि और मजबूत हुआ है All had lost hope until the Chandrayaan-3 emerged as a gateway where India could once again try to secure that lunar dream. Chandrayaan-3, the third Indian lunar exploration mission under the Indian Space Research Organization, is one that was launched to achieve the unachieved. One of the primary objectives of this mission included getting a lander to land safely and softly on the surface of the moon. Soft landing refers to landing at a gentle, controlled speed to not sustain damage to a spacecraft. With the mission surpassing this, their further objectives include observing and demonstrating the rover's driving capabilities on the moon and also conducting and observing experiments on the materials available on the lunar surface to understand the composition of the moon. The mission consists of a lander named Vikram and a rover named Pragyan, which are similar to those used in the Chandrayaan-2 mission. Chandrayaan-3 was launched on the 14th of July 2023 from the Satish Dhawan Space Center, and since then it has crossed horizons and shown us its potential. The three main components of this mission are the propulsion module, the lander Vikram, and the rover Pragyan. The propulsion module is the object that carries the lander and rover configuration to a 100-kilometer lunar orbit. This component is a box-like structure that constitutes a large solar panel mounted on one side and a cylindrical mounting structure for the lander on top. With soft landing being one of the most important objectives of this mission, the Vikram lander is what's responsible for it. The lander is also box-shaped and has four landing legs and four landing thrusters which can generate 800 newtons of thrust each. The lander carries the rover and various scientific instruments that would later help in performing on-site analysis. The next comes the Pragyan rover, a six-wheeled vehicle with a mass of 26 kilograms. This rover is expected to take multiple measurements that would help in research into the composition of the lunar surface the presence of water ice in the lunar soil, the history of lunar impacts, and the evolution of the moon's atmosphere. All of the previous spacecraft that have landed on the moon have landed in the region close to the moon's equator because it is easier and safer here. Here, the terrain and temperature are more conducive and would enable a long and sustained operation of instruments. Sunlight is also present in this region, offering a regular dose of energy to solar-powered instruments. The Chandrayaan-3 aims at the polar regions of the moon, where things are different and landing is difficult. Several parts of this region lie completely dark without sunlight, and temperatures can go below 230 degrees Celsius. This creates extreme difficulty in the operation of instruments. Added to all of this, there are large craters all over the place, making the entire Chandrayaan journey a risky one. One of the main reasons behind the landing failure of the Chandrayaan-2 mission was the altitude increase during the camera coasting phase. This indeed stood out to be a hurdle for the third mission, and that's when they introduced the idea of allowing the lander to control attitude and thrust during all phases of descent, wiping out the possibilities of the altitude increase. Also, the attitude correction rate was increased from Chandrayaan-2's 10 degrees per second to 25 degrees per second, 
With Chandrayaan-3, the lander for Chandrayaan-3 has four variable thrust engines with slew rate-changing capabilities, which is indeed a great change from the Chandrayaan-2's lander, which had five, with the fifth one being centrally mounted and capable only of fixed thrust. Also, another major addition made in the Chandrayaan-3 is that its lander is equipped with a laser Doppler velocimeter to allow measuring altitude in three directions. Chandrayaan-3's impact legs have been made much stronger as compared to Chandrayaan-2. Also, the instrumentation redundancy has been improved, which will enable it to target a more precise 4km by 4km landing region based on images that were previously provided by the Orbiter high-resolution camera. ISRO has made key changes to this mission by improving the structural rigidity, data frequency, and transmission, and has also added multiple contingency systems to improve lander survivability in the event of failures during descent and landing. The prospective landing site was increased compared to the Chandrayaan-2 with the current mission being given instructions to land safely anywhere in a 4km by 2.4km area. The Chandrayaan-3 lander also carried more fuel than Chandrayaan-2 to ensure that the lander could make any last-minute changes. The Chandrayaan-3 lander also has solar panels on four sides, instead of only two in Chandrayaan-2. This measure was taken to ensure that the lander continued to draw solar power, even if it landed in the wrong direction or tumbled over. The polar regions of the Moon have remained unexplored and the Chandrayaan-3 aims at exploring these regions. The extremely cold temperatures could mean that anything that is trapped in the region would remain frozen in time and would not undergo much change. The rocks and soil in the Moon's north and south poles could even provide clues to the early solar system, and this mission aims at collecting vital information like these and sending it to Earth for scientists to analyze and study. Well, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that we can entertain you with more videos from the cosmos. India is with you.